As the prophet Isaiah said, I have made you a light unto the nations, bringing salvation to the ends of the earth. Today, 2,700 years after Isaiah spoke those prophetic words, Israel is becoming a rising power among the nations. And at long last, its light is shining across the continents, bringing hope and salvation to the ends of the earth. It's very important for us to recognize that we possess a great treasure. The capacity to innovate is a great treasure of profound economic value in today's world. We have the economic future of the world in Israel. The true wealth is in innovation the spark of genius embedded in our people into innovation, entrepreneurship. And there's a revolution taking place. This couldn't happen at the, the better time. Look at the 10 leading companies in 2006. Five energy companies, one, one IT company, Microsoft. And a mere 10 years later, 2016, a blink of an eye in historical terms. It's completely reversed. Five IT companies, one energy company left. You know these companies, Apple, Google, Microsoft, Amazon, Facebook. Guess what? They all have research centers in Israel. All of them, major research centers. And they're not alone, there are hundreds more. And there's a reason, something is going on. It's a great change. It's a shift from the old world to the new world. Here's the old world, okay? That's the old world, that's all of 10 years ago, okay? Here are the 10 leading companies in the world. They include uh, five energy companies, one, two, three, four, five, and one IT company. Now shift forward 10 years, which is nothing, it's a blink of an eye, and you see this most amazing change. All of these New companies, all of them, top 10 companies, have major research centers in Israel. Not research centers, major research centers in Israel. These are some of the 300 that do. And in some of them, for some of them, these research centers are the most advanced that they have other, outside their home country. This revolution that you're seeing from 2017, uh, 2007 to 2017, is a revolution that is changing our world both economically and in terms of security. I think it will also change our politics. And what it is is basically the meeting ground between big data, IT, and connectivity. Everything is being driven from this nexus. Everything. Everything. Israeli technology is driving the world. Israeli technology is driving the world. It's the confluence of big data, connectivity, and artificial intelligence, okay? Did you get that? That tall tower there is the United States. The United States is bigger than Israel. But it ain't that much bigger than Israel. And Israel is number two. Israel is one-tenth of one percent of the world's population. And we are receiving 20% uh, of the global share in private uh, in private cybersecurity investments. That's 200 times our weight in the world. What this revolution is doing, big data, AI, and connectivity, is allowing small countries to be big countries. It depends if you have the brains and the system. In order for this to grow, we want to have this as a huge business. We want our position in the world to continue. And we look ahead with pride to the remarkable contributions Israel will continue to make to all nations. Captains uh, of industry, as they're called, that is founders and leaders of uh, big companies and some small companies and medium-sized companies, they're all coming to Israel, including today. I had a meeting with another head of state, and they all want the same three things. Israeli technology, Israeli technology and Israeli technology. They 
crave it. They thirst for it. Because they know that we're in the knowledge center. They know that Israel is the repository of great genius, great creativity, entrepreneurship, innovation, scientific capability, out-of-the-box thinking. This is a tremendous capacity that we have because people are coming here. The new powers, the old powers and the new powers. You know, the new world powers. Uh, the, um, you know, the um, uh, <coughs> superpowers. Uh, Google, uh, Yahoo, you're not laughing. It's not a laughing matter, it's true. They all want to participate in this. They all understand that the world economy is being propelled forward by the internet. The internet requires cyber protection. You have to protect your bank accounts, your privacy, your communications, the power lines, the power grids, traffic lines, train schedules. All of that is run today in the digital world and all of that requires protection and we happen to have a capacity to protect it. So for this and for many, many other reasons, Israel is being sought after. Any country can be attacked today with cyber attacks and every country needs the combination of a national cyber defense effort and a robust cyber security industry. And I think Israel has that and has that in ways that are, in many ways, unmatched. You have bank accounts? You should. Okay. Well, you don't want anyone hacking into them, right? Or into your uh, cars, or into the planes you ride. You need cyber security. Everybody needs cyber. Israel has become a world leader in cyber security. Look at how much they invest in the hundreds of Israeli startup companies. Tremendous companies, big data, connectivity, artificial intelligence. Let's go back to cyber. That's the first industry because everybody else needs it. And here's what's happening to uh, Israeli, um, uh, the Israeli cyber industry. It's growing, obviously, in sales. It's growing in terms of market share. In 2014, we were 10 percent of the market share of the global private investment in cybersecurity. By 2017, it's doubled. That's a very quick doubling. Uh, and it is, uh, uh, it is now second to the United States. That tall tower there is the United States. The United States is bigger than Israel. But it ain't that much bigger than Israel. And Israel is number two. What percentage do we get of the world global investment in cybersecurity, in private investment in cybersecurity? We're one-tenth of one percent of the world's population and we get a whopping 20 percent of global private investment in cyber. We're punching, we're punching 200 times above our weight. Not two times, not ten times, not a hundred times, 200 times above our weight. That's one heck of a punch. Very strong. That is people from around the world come to Israel, and Israel is going everywhere around the world. There is such a thing that I call today cyber diplomacy. If you want to see it reflected on a map, look at the blue. The blue are all the new agreements that we have made in various efforts, in various efforts around the world in the year 2017. Uh, I've been to Africa four times in two years, to South America, most recently in Brazil. Uh, we have, with the great powers of Asia, we have uh, new agreements. Every single country here, every single country here, uh, in Israel's expanding diplomatic horizons, is talking to us about cyber. They all want to share in our knowledge of cyber defense. That doesn't mean that we share with everyone, and it doesn't mean that we share equally with those that we share. But we do have a general policy of cooperation between governments, and we have a general policy of cooperation with companies. And I'll tell you, we made it stronger by moving Israel to free market principles, which unleashed the spark of genius embedded in our people into innovation, entrepreneurship. Technology, there seems to be a huge growth in Israel. The, the, the amount of technology that is developed in your country, and yet it's a tiny little country, and you sell it to, you know, you work with countries, massive countries like oh, India and oh. so forth. 
that's obviously part of your plan, right? It's very much my plan. Israel has never been stronger militarily, economically, diplomatically, and it's a very deliberate policy. Israel has never been stronger militarily. Tremendously strong. That's an F-35 fighter plane, the most advanced in the world. That's an Iron Dome interceptor and many other systems that we developed with the help of America. This incredible military is buttressed by superb intelligence, unmatched in the world. You know, in the last few years, Israel's incredible intelligence services have foiled dozens, dozens of major terrorist attacks across the world in dozens of countries. That plane, a plane like that, could have been blown out of the sky if it weren't for Israeli intelligence, a plane heading from Australia to the Persian Gulf. You're boarding planes when you leave this place. You are safer because of Israeli intelligence. It not only protects Israeli lives, it protects innocent lives around the world. The good news doesn't stop merely with Israel's strong military. It continues with Israel's strong economy. It's a tremendously strong economy. So when you take the security interest and intelligence that countries have to protect themselves against terrorism, and that's pretty much all countries, and you take the needs for technological uh, innovation that is driving the world right now, both of them are present in Israel, and so everybody wants them. And that gives me the third thing, which is this massive flourishing of Israel's diplomatic relations with just about every country in the world. Not all. Well, we're not big on North Korea, you know, not too big on Iran, but just about everyone else. And so this is the triangle. It's economic power, security power, gives you diplomatic power. That will take a few years to translate itself into the votes of this archaic body called the General Assembly of the United Nations. Because we have this tremendous capacity for security and intelligence, and because we have this tremendous capacity for civilian technology, for making the lives of people richer, safer, more productive, many countries are coming to Israel because they want to share with us these benefits. And that creates the third great change, which is a flourishing of Israel's diplomatic relations around the world. We are coloring the world blue. All these countries are coming to us. India, China, Mongolia, Kazakhstan, all of them. Azerbaijan, Muslim countries. So we're coloring the world blue. And you know what? The numbers, you remember people talked about Israel's isolation? Remember that? Israel's isolation? Pretty soon, the countries that don't have relations with us, they're going to be isolated. There are those who talk about boycotting Israel. We'll boycott them. Congratulations to all of you gathered at the UN to fight BDS. You should fight BDS but not because it's gonna threaten the Israeli economy. That's not gonna happen. Sometimes I wish the BDS movement would succeed so I can take a break from meeting all these world leaders who are coming to Israel every single day. They or their delegations or their trade missions, they're all coming here because Israel has become a, a global force in technology and everybody wants to partake. It is the Israeli know-how. And that is something that is bigger than all these boycotters could possibly address. I went to school in uh, Cambridge, Massachusetts, and in MIT, and I lived in student housing. I used to go every day down to student housing, it's called Eastgate, to go to the Sloan School. So you go down the elevator, walk along the sidewalk to get to the business school, and on the other side of the street, I see this big, ugly warehouse, opaque windows, bars on the windows. Now this is in the MIT campus. MIT is, you know, they have IMP buildings, beautiful. 
beautiful buildings. And what's this ugly warehouse doing there? And they said, well, that's CIA, NSA. That's the first time I heard NSA, the words. And of course, what it was, was a government intelligence investment smack in the center of academia, which produced Route 128, which produced Route 495. And the same thing happened in Stanford, exactly the same thing, and produced the Valley. So my idea is, why don't we do that here? I decided several years ago to turn Israel into one of the five uh, cyber powers of the world, and that required allowing this combination of military intelligence, uh, academia, and industry to converge in one place. Our NSA, which is called Unit A200, it's pretty big. How big do you think it is? Hmm? Well, I'll give you a hint. America, the United States, is uh, about 42 times the size of Israel in terms of population. So how much bigger do you think the American NSA is relative to the Israeli NSA? It's not even 10 times bigger. You know the five eyes? Israel is the sixth eye? No, Israel is the second eye. Israel is the second eye. So we have a tremendous sunk investment, whether we like it or not. To survive, you know, Israel is not that big a country, but it has to have a very big defense capability. So to survive, we need a very big head. Very big head. And this head, we invest in. We take our brightest people and put them in. We look at the entire population. We go into the high schools. We go, we're going to go into kindergartens very soon. So we need the smartest people. We put them in this. They run on the information networks and then it develops into a business enterprises if we allow the graduates of uh, our military units and our intelligence units to create companies and allow the graduates of our security services to merge into companies with local partners and foreign partners. Israel had technology. It had technology because the military, especially military intelligence, uh, produced a lot of capabilities. These incredibly gifted young men and women who come out of uh, the army or the Mossad. Or the Mossad. They want to start their startups. Now here's how the dots connect. Nations, democracies, don't go to war easily. And they usually debate and argue uh, before they do. Sometimes they have to be bombed into going to war. There is no question whatsoever that Saddam is seeking and is working and is advancing towards the development of nuclear weapons. No question whatsoever. If you take out Saddam, Saddam's regime, I guarantee you, that it will have enormous positive reverberations on the region. Benjamin Netanyahu has publicly said the September 11th attacks have been good for Israel. Netanyahu said, quote, we're benefiting from one thing, and that is the attack on the Twin Towers and Pentagon and the American struggle in Iraq. Thank you, America. Thank you, successive American presidents. Thank you, Congress. 
Republicans and Democrats alike. Thank you, APAC, for helping bring this about. You're terrific. Thank you.